This image comes from photographer Darren Hebert, who, like many of you, was asking me how luminosity masks might help enhance wildlife photos. In this particular moose image, the animal's backlit, so the fur is lacking detail, and there's a little bit of an excessive rim light in the back. Both of those things can be addressed with luminosity masks, and we'll get to that in a moment. But let me first note that I've already made some changes. So here's the original raw, and if we zoom into the detail, you see there's just hundreds of pieces of like plant material floating around in the air or sticking to the animal. And I didn't think you'd want to watch me clone that out. So I went ahead and did that in the raw. So just cleaning that up. And then additionally, the image was shot at high ISO. There's just a lot of noise. So I used Adobe AID noise at about 35% to clean up the sky as well. If you're curious how that works, I'll have a separate video below, but I just thought this was a better starting point for the video. So to begin the edit, let's go and work on the background here. And my overall vision is that I'm going to end with a vignette to bring attention to the moose's face. So I want to brighten up this background and maybe add just a little bit of contrast in color. So let's double click to go into the raw smart object. And to prepare for the vignette, let's go push up the exposure by about maybe a third of a stop or so. I want a little more contrast in the scenes. Let's push that up to about maybe plus 25. Let's add a little bit of highlight to it around maybe plus 30, 35. And then the color here, I'm going to shift a little bit cooler. Let's grab the temp and bring it down to like 4,500. The tint, let's boost that up to around 15. And I'll add a little touch of extra color here by going down to the camera calibration tab, the blue primary saturation, and pushing that up to around plus 40. So I think that looks good overall, with the exception that this tree it has too much color. But the way to get rid of that is going to be mostly through the HSL sliders, which we can't do locally. So let's just say OK, and we'll edit separately with a new layer. So we say OK. Here's our base for the image. And now we need a new copy to process with different settings. So for that, we can either right click and choose New Smart Object to be a copy, or if you're using Lumenzia, Go hold on the shift key and click pre blend, and you jump right to an independent copy. So, with this, we're going to double click to go edit our tree. And again, we just want to bring down the saturation here. It's a lovely tree and probably a great subject on its own, but in this case, it grabs too much attention. So, let's go and grab the saturation. Let's bring that down to like yeah, maybe around minus 20. And let's grab the oranges and yellows and make those negative for the HSL saturation. So, something around minus 30 is about as far as I go. And I think that'll look pretty good for the tree area. So we'll say OK. But we need to blend it in just here. So we need a black layer mask. And we can get that by holding down Alt or Option and clicking for a new mask to get that black mask. And then we just paint white by hitting B. Take our brush, make it a bit bigger. We got white paint with high opacity and low flow. We'll just brush right over the tree. No special masking is required here because it's a you know, pretty low saturation around the tree, so it blends in very nicely. And you can see from before where the tree is grabbing too much attention to after lets you focus more on the moose. Now we think we're ready to start dealing with the fur of this animal. And for that, I think we can process the image for much better fur details and then just blend it into the dark parts of the animal. So I'm going to create yet another smart object and I'm going to start with the original color. So let's go click on this layer. And again, I'm going to shift click pre blend or new smart object to be a copy. This will be our animal fur layer. We'll double click. And in here, we need to bring out a lot more details. So let's go push up our shadows to around like plus 75 or so, at which point we've got a lot of brightness, but we've lost contrast and things are too blue. So let's go add back some contrast. Let's go push that up to around plus 75 or so. Let's go warm up the temp to around 5300 ish. That's looking much more balanced. And we can bring out a little bit more structure and detail here by pushing up our texture to something like plus 30 and our clarity to around plus 20 or so. That fur detail looks much nicer. Obviously, the background looks terrible, but we're going to blend it in just where we need it through a luminosity mask. So that's what we need for this layer. So we'll say OK. And now we want to hide everything with a black mask. So I can Alt or Option click on Mask. Whether I do it in Lumenzia or Photoshop, it'll get the same result if there was no preview or selection active. So we got our black mask ready to paint white. I don't want to paint freehand here, though. If I try and paint around the details of this animal, I'm probably going to spill in the background, and that's going to cause problems. So I need more precision. I need a selection. So now we're going to go reach for the Lumenzia panel, and we want a way to target the dark pixels. So we're going to click for a darks preview. 
in the preview, anything which is white is something we'll be able to paint later. Anything which is black is protected. We don't have enough separation. There's way too much of the background here. So let's go drag down to something like darks three. That's looking much better, but I'd like even more separation. And for that, we can take advantage of the fact that the background has lots of color, but the fur does not. So we can go revise our color conversion layer in Lumenzi's previews. You can always edit these preview layers and whatever you see in the black and white, that will be your selection, as in highly selected with white and protected with black. So let's open up our color conversion and just anything with color, let's make it bright. And if we make that lighter, then it's not dark. And so it's not part of a darks selection. So you see that nicely helps further isolate the animal. And with that, I think we can load that as our selection. To do that, we click on the cell button in Lumenzia to make it into a selection. So now we can take our layer mask, hit B for our brush. And once again, brush through a selection, or I guess now we're brushing through a selection onto the animal. So this is gonna let us brush on the fur and it'll protect us from painting on the background. I wanna make sure I get the bottom of the antlers a bit. Make sure I really get the face and the shoulders. That's where there's not only a fur detail, but some structure to the animal that really shines. And you can see from before to after how we've gone from a, a pretty blah looking image in the sense that you just can't see the main subject to something where you really see what's going on with this animal. That's much, much better. And because of our luminosity selection, nothing spilled onto the background. So I think we're done with that selection and we can hit Commander Control D and we'll see the cell button is no longer green, so we no longer have that as our active selection. Now I wanna go and work a bit on this rim light. It's not really a problem, but I find it a little bit distracting. So I wanna darken this down. So for that, let's go click on a brightness contrast layer. Open that up by double clicking and just go for negative brightness and contrast. And we just wanna paint that into the fur where it's rim lit. So let's hide everything with a black mask with Alt or Option click on mask. And now we need to select these pixels. We're obviously not gonna hand paint them. We could isolate things a little bit better with a blend if, because right now we'd just be painting directly on our mask. In Lamenti, if we hold on Shift and click on L, we get a light blend if. So now we know that we wouldn't be touching the black fur, but we still need a little more precision because the background is still light. So that would be adjusted as well. So to hit those areas, you might think, well, why not use a lights preview? But you're gonna see that that picks up the background and you're never gonna separate because they're both light targets. So lights really isn't the right option here. That's not a good separation. I'm gonna click on X to discard that. We need a different approach. And what really stands out here is that everything is lighter than its surrounding pixels. For that, we can exploit the difference by clicking the diff button in Lumenzia. And we'll just choose the lighter option. And you can see that's clearly gonna target the areas where we've got rim light, not only in the back of the animal, but on the, the top here. So let's load that as our selection by clicking on the cell button. And we've got our mask active, B for our brush, make it much smaller so we're only hitting the areas we want to. The selection is gonna help, but it doesn't do everything. And just brush right over here with white. So we're revealing our layer, which is darkening things down, as well as on the back here a little bit. And you can just see from before with that brightness to after, it's a subtle shift, but I think it just helps nicely reduce something which in the grand scheme of things is subtle, but a little bit distracting to something that just is, you know, still separating the animal, but a little bit more clean. So subtle little thing that improves the image. Now I think we're ready for our vignette. So I can discard my selection by hitting Command or Control D again. And I'm gonna hit L for a new lasso selection. And I wanna go target the animal's face and antlers. Something pretty tight. I'm gonna go a little bit bigger, like so. So this will be my selection. And Lumenzia can turn that into a vignette by clicking on the Vignette button. We'll just say OK. And you see that nicely brings attention right to the animal's face. And I think we've got this edit to a really good place. Let's take a look at the original where we've got the backlit animal, where you can't see the detail. There's all those little specks floating around in the air. There's lots of noise. The separation is a little bit too strong in the back. Got this overly colorful tree to after, where it's just really cleaning things up. If I kind of step this back a little bit, you really see from before to after how nicely that cleans up the overall scene. Now to learn more about luminosity masking, click to this next video.